Teach Ahari and his Biba boys have blazed a trail across the city. A trail of drugs, a trail of blood. Do you think people will be surprised to find out, A, that this is a true story, mm -hmm. and B, that this actually happened in Canada? Everybody in the, in the West, the Western coast of Canada knows about the gangsters because it's news every week. For a lot of other people, they are going to be surprised. And I think when they look at the trailer, they're first going to see this as a piece of fiction. But for me, when I went through that script, when I first got it and I just started like researching the script, I found that there was a news report that corresponded to every what we deem as crazy action. Say a word and I'll blow your brains out. I beg you. Three words. Unplug her. Bam. So Jeep. What I found, I mean, he's he's in charge. He has a presence. He can, you know, he can dish it out when he needs to. He's also very much a family man. He's a bad, good guy. <laughs> I think uh, the most endearing part of the film is the family part of the film. The first generation or second generation Canadian, Indo-Canadians, they forget what their parents went through, and they're, you know, they think their parents are uncool and this and that, but they don't realize. I think what's, that's one of the biggest discoveries of the character while in the movie is that he finally sees his father for all these hardships and stuff he went through and he looks at his own son and what kind of example he's setting for him which is what leads to the redemption part of the character and makes him more lovable. It's called a kirpan. It means mercy, compassion, justice. But you guys are like impeccably dressed in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. The commit to being seen thing is, is such an important part of the psychology of gangsters, this idea of, of needing to be accepted and not be invisible, right? And so that's, <clears throat> that's how they, they grow their business and that's how they you know, grow their markets, and, and, but also this, this desire to, to be seen and to, to, to find power and, you know, mm -hmm. and respect in such a small community. And then how I transformed, you know, the notion of rolling up the mustache like that. That was kind of like a deep uh, thing too. Dad wants Jade's head on a platter. You're angling to be a Biba boy. I just want to talk about the evolution, how you sort of went from like being on one side and then being on another side. How do you go through that as an actor and, and get into that part? You don't know what he's playing, you don't know where he is. And while I was like working on it and while I was getting into the character and with a lot of discussion with Deepa, one of the things we realized was that in every scene, he's got so much on his shoulders and a lot of the times what happens is that that breeds like an inertia, like a stillness, because he can't be boisterous, because he can't make a mistake. So it's, it's, it's really fascinating. What do you think will surprise audiences the most about Beaver Boy? South Asians playing roles that aren't, yeah. that aren't what you expect. We're all the same, we're, you know, we're, you know, there's there's bad sides and there's good sides, but like, but to show that to show that side of it is is going to be surprising. I'm gonna tell you who the Bieber rat is. You think I don't know?